So good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Sakith Guntapali. I'm the Chief of Gynecologic Oncology at the University of Colorado Cancer Center in Denver, Colorado. And today I'm very honored and privileged to introduce Heidi, who is one of our cervical cancer patients. Uh, Heidi is a long-term survivor of cervical cancer, and she's had a really, really uh, interesting course that I think is uh, something that everybody should hear about. So we're really excited to have her here today. And Heidi, thank you so much for giving us your time. Uh, why don't you tell us just a little bit about yourself and just kind of where you're from and kind of your, your story kind of prior to, to us uh, meeting about four years ago. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, like Dr. Gunther Polly said, my name is Heidi. I grew up in Colorado, in Northern Colorado specifically. Um, I grew up in the middle of three girls. I went to school in Northern Colorado, continue to live in Colorado, spend a lot of my time outdoors and just enjoying what Colorado has to offer. Um, before all of my cancer diagnosis and treatments, I was very active, um, continued to uh, play sports as I was able to uh, in the Northern Colorado area, but soccer specifically, um, and just tried to stay active and be a normal middle-aged adult. Uh, worked in banking, have continued to work in banking for a really long time, and um, just normal everyday life for a middle-aged individual living in northern Colorado. Can you tell us a little bit about what symptoms you had when you were first diagnosed with cervical cancer? Yeah, um, so we actually found the cancer through a routine women's exam. I didn't have a whole lot of initial symptoms. The only thing that was unusual that probably could have determined that there was a diagnosis that could have been made was some bleeding intermittently between intercourse and some periods. So other than that, I didn't have any uh, tall tale symptoms that would go along with cervical cancer. Uh, mainly just through uh, routine women's exams is where we found that I had um, some abnormal cells. And you had a pap smear and there were abnormal cells and then some biopsies were done and ultimately you were found to have what was an early stage cervical cancer. And tell us a little bit about the treatment that you got uh, after we met and you got the diagnosis. Yeah, so I've been through several treatments. The first treatment was uh, chemotherapy and radiation externally and internally. Um, so I did that for my first round of treatment and um, we had three reoccurrences since then. And we did a, additional chemotherapy with some maintenance medication an ADC treatment, and then some radiation. So we've been managing and monitoring the treatments very, very closely. And every time it comes back, it's just a, what's gonna work best at that time. Um, but most of the time it's either been a chemo or a conjugate of the chemo um, ADC treatment. Can you tell us a little bit about when your cancer came back? You know, how did you feel? Like, what were you thinking? Uh, just how did you feel at that time? when? You know, I guess it was two years ago, I told you, you know, well, you've been disease free for a long time, but now your cancer's back. How, what was going through your head? Yeah, uh, the first reoccurrence was devastating. Uh, when you go through original treatments, you think that you're in the clear, you've got past this, you're, you're doing well. So I think the first time it came back, I was very shocked. We had a, a good time frame in between where I was disease free and felt good. And I didn't have any tall tale signs that it was back. Um, I had some flank pain the second time, and that's what ended up me going in to, to get a review of what was going on. So um, I think I was definitely shocked and surprised. Um, the first diagnosis, you, you're you in disbelief, and then the second time you think you're in the clear and you have to go through it again. Um, so I, I was had a lot of emotions that went al along the second diagnosis, but I'd say the ones after that have gotten a lot easier. And then talk to me a little bit about when it came back, you know, we had a discussion about retreating you with chemo and we did do that. And then we talked about clinical trials and we talked a lot about kind of these new treatments and you went on the antibody drug conjugate, uh, the disotinib. What were your thoughts around that? Were you scared? Were you nervous? Like, what did you think? I think for me, it was the right decision at that time. We've tried a couple of different lines of treatment with the chemo 
it was something that I'd not heard a lot about. It was something that was a little bit newer in the cervical cancer treatment realm. So um, it took a lot of research and time for me to understand exactly what that meant. I think it was an encouraging treatment plan just because it wasn't full on chemo uh, where you have to go through that every couple of weeks uh, for a determined amount of time. It was uh, something that I just, I thought it was right for me at that time uh, because we'd gone through a number of treatments and I was willing and, and ready to try something new and different um, and was excited about the research behind the, the drug that you introduced to me at that time. And how did you kind of manage some of the side effects that you had? I mean, was it a was it as bad as chemo? Was it easier than chemo? Like how, what were your side effects with this kind of newer treatment? Yeah, I think it was different than chemo. I still had some of the symptoms that I would on the chemo treatments that there was some fatigue and some nausea here and there. But I think the difference was some of the additional side effects like the ocular toxicity um, and some neuropathy that came along with that. Um, we worked really closely with the um, cancer center and some additional providers to help me through that. Um, I still am working through some of those side effects about a year and a half out of treatment. Um, but I'd say those were probably the biggest changes were the ocular changes and then some of the muscle weakening that I didn't necessarily see with the first lines of chemo treatment. Got it. And today you're cancer free. You know, you've had a little bit, we've used some radiation, you know, kind of you know, sparsely in between, but today, knock on wood, we're really happy that you are cancer free. Um, maybe eight, nine years ago, someone that had two recurrences of their cervical cancer, you know, it, the survival was very poor and here you are disease free, you're four, you're five. What are your thoughts on that? Like, how does that make you feel? I'm still in a little bit of disbelief. Um, after that last round of treatment, I think it's been routine that we just continue to treat. And so when my scan came back that we were clear, I was a little bit shocked. Um, I prepared myself, I think, to continue treating this disease for as long as I need to. Um, so it's exciting to be able to kind of live my life in my late 30s to enjoy the things that I still have and spend time with family and friends and just try and get back to as normal life as I possibly can. So it's been a great couple of months since we learned that I was cancer free and I'm trying to do everything I can to um, enjoy that. What would advice would you give to a woman who let's say it was in your shoes, she got a primary upfront treatment or surgery or something and her cancer came back and then it came back again. What would you tell them? Like, what would you want them to leave from a conversation with you? Yeah, um, just continue to stay strong. Anything that comes at you, you can overcome. Um, it's a matter of understanding truly what the treatment plans are and advocating for yourself along that treatment plan. I know you and I have worked really closely on changing things as things come up and uh, we changed treatment plans in the middle of certain treatments. And um, so just stay strong, advocate for yourself and arm yourself with knowledge. Um, there's a lot of information out there and your oncology team and your care team is going to be your greatest resource in helping you understand what your battle is and how, how do you overcome that? Um, I mean, how many times have we been through this and if I'm cancer free, uh, the only thing that's kept me here is staying strong and fighting and uh, making sure that I understand what, what each treatment plan means. And um, it gets tough. I'm not going to lie. It has been tough in some of the treatment plans, but um, making sure that I stay close with you and communicate on what struggles I'm having has, has definitely helped me. So stay strong. And the last question I'll ask you is, if somebody wants to advocate for cervical cancer, what would you tell them to do? What, how would you tell them to advocate? Yeah, um, I think that's a very important one. So to advocate for others, I would say um, making sure that you are vaccinated early. Uh, I was not given that um, option growing up. It was a little bit um, further out from when they'd start 
talk, talking about the Gardasil shot and some of those yeah. things. So um, get vaccinated, get checked, get checked frequently and often. Um, and if anything's abnormal, make sure that you are questioning um, what some of your test results are. Um, I think mine probably could have been identified sooner had I questioned some of the symptoms and side effects beforehand. Um, so make sure that you are vaccinated, make sure you are um, getting checked routinely um, and that you're asking questions during your women's exams. Okay. Well, Heidi, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Um, you're our hero. You are an advocate. You're a spokesperson. You're a survivor. And you're just everything that we could want or hope for for our patients here five years down the line from a recurrent cervical cancer. So thank you again for your time. Thank you so much.